ASM 301 Ag Systems Management, Stephen Poe in the University of Arizona. We're going to talk about land surveying today. First of all, we're going to cover our objectives very quickly. We want to make sure that we uh, hit the high spots there, and in order to do that, we need to be able to discover the equipment used in differential and profile surveying, be able to describe it. Understand the terms used in differential and profile leveling. Be able to read a surveying rod. Be able to identify and control the common sources of error during leveling. Be able to describe the process of differential and profile leveling. And be able to record a set of notes for differential and profile leveling. And if we can do that, we'll be in pretty good shape. Well, we'll start out here. This is a typical uh, picture that we saw last week talking about rectangular survey systems. This is a quadrangle. A quadrangle is 24 miles by 24 miles. Townships are the smaller squares in there. So the townships are the individual squares there that are 6 miles on each side. So how much area have you got there? 36 square miles. 36 square miles in each township. Now each township is further divided into sections. So these little guys right in here, numbered 1 through 36, each of these are one mile per side. And so those are one square mile, 640 acres. That's what we're looking at for a section of ground. So once again, we've got a quadrangle. That's the overall size right here. That's uh, about uh, 576 square miles, if you're doing the math on that, or maybe 368,640 acres. Then we further break that down into the townships, individual townships. And you can see the township lines there and the range lines. So one of the questions we always ask is, what direction do the range lines run? And of course, they run north and south and then further divided down into individual sections and these sections can be divided down even further sections being 640 acres so if we take a look at the numbering section numbering system on the sections we always start with one right up here in the furthest northeast corner and we'll do in a serpentine pattern actually working our way through the divisions of a section then uh, always a little bit of confusion when you start talking about these. Remember when we start uh, describing the land we're going to start with the smallest unit that we have. So if we're going to describe this section that we've got right over here, okay, we take a look at this imaginary line through this uh, north and south and east and west and we describe this as the northeast quarter of the northwest quarter. okay? Because this is northeast and then of this entire area here, okay, we're northwest of this guy here. We're west of this section over here, and we're north of this guy here. So on the bigger picture, this is northwest one quarter. And if you take a look at some that are divided into half, here's a section down here. This is the west one half because the smallest increment is this lot right here, and it's an increment of this overall size here. So this is the west one half, and then this block is the southeast one quarter of the overall block. Hope that helps you understand the divisions of a section. Then we start numbering systems. We've already talked about that a little bit, but the way these were originally laid out is these were originally laid out with chains, and chains are uh, uh, one set of chains is. 66 feet and uh, it takes about a hundred links to get to that 66 feet. Some other uh, interesting things about chains, there's uh, 10 chains in a furlough and um, 80 chains in a statute mile. And you've got a picture of, of a, an old set of chains there and you've got an example of a survey done with chains and when you do a, any kind of survey, we always have to measure horizontal distance, don't we? So we'd go up and we'd measure over. So you can't measure up the surface of a slope and use a correction factor 
you actually had to measure up, hold the chains up, and then measure across. So it was important that you had a set of chains that wouldn't sag so that you could stretch them and make sure that they were accurate. Here's an original survey that's done showing uh, townships laid out with uh, sections and you can see the uh, individual measures here. So uh, one chain being 66 feet and we're talking about 100 lengths okay, being 66 feet. And so when you see these older surveys, those were all done in chains and they've been converted. Terms we need to understand to be successful at the surveying game is of course a benchmark, which is a known or assumed elevation. A backside. A backside is a rod reading on a known elevation. So we'll uh, that'll be the first reading we'll take will be a backside back on a known elevation. And that's a, that's where we're gonna start. The HI is the height of the instrument. That's what HI stands for. Sometimes we refer to that as the elevation of the line of sight and the reason we do that is because it's actually above sea level. So it's not just the height of the instrument above the ground, it's the elevation of the line of sight above sea level. The foresight is a rod reading on a point of unknown elevation and we'll do that on to our turning point. So if we're going to make an extended survey, we're going to have to pick up the instrument and move. So we'll do a backside to start, back on a known elevation, and we'll do a foresight on an unknown elevation, and then we'll rotate around a turning point, which is a temporary benchmark used when you're going to move the instrument. So when we pick it up, we have a turning point, and then that will allow us to shoot back on that turning point. The tools that we're going to use, quite often we'll use an engineering or a dumpy level, uh, we started out using dumpy levels many years ago, and uh, I don't know why they were called dumpy other than they were uh, they were kind of long and awkward. They were uh, almost uh, two feet long. Uh, nowadays, we're going to use an engineering level, or of course we have lots of electronic measuring devices, but uh, it's uh, harder and harder to find the standard dumpy level. And nowadays, we mostly use engineering levels. And of course, we can use a handheld level. The type of rods that we would read would normally be a Philadelphia rod. That's the most common. And it's typically in decimals and feet and portions of a foot. But you might also have a construction rod thrown in there and that might be in feet and inches. And you gotta be really careful to make sure you don't get those two confused. You might have one crew out there working with a Philadelphia rod and another one working with a standard construction rod. And then you end up trying to mix inches and decimal feet can be done, but it uh, takes a little bit of manipulation. Different kinds of error that we're going to have. And the most common is an instrument error where we set the instrument up improperly. When we read the rod, if the rod is not perfectly straight up and down or plumb, we are going to get a wrong reading because as it goes at an angle, we're going to read a higher and higher number. So you got to make sure your rod is straight up and down. And we need to make sure that uh, when we do that, uh, we'll wave the rod so that we can uh, read it at the time when the number gets the lowest. And that will be when the rod is straight up and down. Parallax, an error that we get uh, when we got different kinds of weather conditions that will actually distort our readings. Uh, one that we do have a lot of control over is the sights not being equal, and we're talking about the back sights and the four sights. The mathematical sign for back sight is a plus, and a four sight is a minus, so we want to make sure that the pluses and minuses are equal. So if you're going out and doing the surveying and you have a 200 foot back sight reading, you want to have 200 feet up to your four sight reading, and the reason for this is it will allow the errors to cancel out. Uh, some errors to cancel out. So if your instrument error is, is a uh, tenth of a, a foot per hundred feet, uh, which would be a lot of error by the way, um, it will cancel out if you have an uh, equal number of uh, feet both forward and back in your foresight and backside. And then of course you can read the wrong numbers on the rod because you're too far away, or the rod holder may have the rod backwards and you could be reading the wrong number. And then my favorite error of all is math. There's a lot of math in surveying. You have to be careful and take very good copious notes. 
and math errors are responsible for a lot of problems. Uh, one of the objectives was a differential leveling survey and I understand that and to understand a differential leveling survey you need to take an uh, elevation from one point to another and what we are interested in is the difference between those two points and we would use that anytime we're going to be building a building if we were going to put in a drain line, if we're going to put in an irrigation uh, line, uh, drain field, something like that, all these things would be done with a differential level survey. The profile level is when you want to know the contour or the shape of the ground around an area. And a profile leveling survey is one that uh, you might use to draw a map to figure out your slopes of the